When you see the word identity, generally that means that it's going to be something pretty boring. See identity? Think boring. So an identity function should be a pretty boring function. Well, what's a boring function? How about something that just gives you back the same thing? Like f of 2, that gives you back 2. f of negative 1, that gives you back negative 1. f of a plus b gives you back a plus b. So in general, I could say f of x, that gives you back x. Pretty boring. This is the identity function. And uh, since it is kind of a special function, an especially boring function, uh, we'll label it as i of x instead of f of x to denote i for identity. Here's the definition. If a is any set, then the identity function i, which goes from a to a, is given by i of x equals x for all x in a. Okay, well, it's a pretty boring function. Let's look at some of its boring properties. How about is the identity function injective? Well, we would probably think it might be injective because the identity function doesn't do a whole lot, so there's no reason to think it wouldn't be injective. Here's how you prove that something is injective. Let's try and prove it. So here's our proof. And we'll start off by saying uh, we're going to let i, the identity function, be given by i of x equals x. And I'm just stating that because it's the definition of the identity function, and I'll probably want to use it in the proof. Next, let x1 and x2 be two elements in the set A, and suppose that i of x1 equals i of x2. And where am I getting that from? That's going to be step one in uh, the proof here, and I'm just restating this line, basically just copying it down, and instead of f here, I'm using i for the identity function. Okay, well, we're pretty much done. Uh, we know the definition of the identity function says that i of x equals x, so i of x1, that's x1, i of x2, that's x2. We have x1 equals x2, that's step two of the proof, so we're done. We can say that i is injective. Again, it's a pretty boring function, and it gives us a pretty boring proof. Okay, so we showed that i was injective. How about surjective? Again, we might uh, suspect that the identity function will be surjective. Here's how you prove that something is surjective. So let's go ahead and try and prove it. So first, I'm again going to define the identity function, and just using the definition that's given up here. And then I'm going to let y be some element in a. Now, if you look at the first step here, it says let y be some element in b. But remember, we're talking about instead of f going from a to b, we're talking about our identity function. And our identity function goes from a to a. So b here is really still a. Well, the identity function acting on y gives us back y. So I found something in a that gives us back y. In other words, I'm choosing my x to be y here, basically. So i is surjective. Again, a boring function gives us a boring proof. Well, if something is injective and surjective, then we say that that thing is bijective. So in this case, I could say the identity function is bijective. How does the identity function act under composition of functions? Well, let's try and prove this statement. For any set a, let i be the identity function from a to a, given by i of x equals x for all elements x and a, that's just the definition. Show that for any set b and any function f that goes from a to b, we have f composed with i equal to f. In other words, function composition, in a sense, is kind of like the identity function, gives you back the same function. Here's a proof. Let a, little a, be an element of the set a, and consider the function composition, f composed with i, acting on a. So this is just a calculation. Well, f composed with i is the same thing as f of i of a, but we know that i of a is just a, that's what the identity function does, so this is just f of a. So that says that f composed with i gives us f. How do I know that? Well, here's f composed with i acting on something, some element a, and that gave us back f.
acting on some element A. So in general, for any element A, this should work, so F composed with I, that gives me F. A similar argument holds if I reverse the order, I composed with F, and you can see uh, how that might look uh, right here. So again, the identity function is pretty boring and it has some pretty boring properties, but the notation for the identity function does come in handy later on, as you'll see.